afternoon and welcome to Crafters TV. I'm Lily and I'm super, super excited to be with you for the next hour. We've got a fabulous craft along. Again, I'm showing off, I did this on Monday, a fabulous craft along. Well, I hope you'll find it fabulous and I hope you'll find lots of crafty inspiration as we craft through this hour. Just the one hour for our craft along today, um, but we're gonna do our project start to finish and this is what we're gonna be creating. So we're gonna be using our Christmas 3D scene builder stamp and dies um, that we launched last month. Our lovely Debbie Robinson brought these to Crafters TV. Perhaps you've got yours already but if you've not got your, um, your set already then do check out the website you will find these under the shop the day page and grab yours so you can craft along with us. So we're going to be creating this diorama card on today's craft along. Super, super excited to share this project with you. Don't forget, um, running all of this week, it is our CTV anniversary week. So you will get double points on all of your orders and also a free gift on all orders over £10. So perfect time to stop with us, shop with us even, and stop with us, stop for the whole hour. Uh, hopefully craft along with us. It's the best time uh, to shop with us here at Crafters Companion. But let's get started with this project really excited to put, put this one together. So what we're going to start with is we're starting off with some of our craft card and you're going to need two different pieces of your craft card. One of them you're going to cut to six and a half inches by 11 inches in length. Um, so this is just some of our Crafters Companion craft card. You will find this on the website. It's A4 in size and we've cut it down to six and a half inches by 11 inches. And all we're going to do is we're going to take our scoreboard uh, and we're going to we're going to use a A4 scoreboard for this. You don't need to use an A3. So if you don't have an A3 scoreboard at home, you don't need to worry about this at all. Um, you can use your A4 scoreboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to score at on this short edge. We're going to score at one and a quarter inches. So find one inch and one and a quarter inches and just score down. And I always say perhaps you. Um, caught our craft along that we did on Monday um, with our, um, our fabulous triple easel car we created. I always say don't just score once over the one area, score multiple times just to build up that score line uh, and make that a nice sharp crease onto there. Then when we scored at one and a quarter inches, we're going to score at two and a quarter inches just like so. That same technique of scoring multiple times over that one area to build up that score line to make it really nice and crisp. So when we come to actually fold our card together, we're going to get a really nice sharp fold onto there and it's going to be lovely and crisp. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn our piece of cardstock. So we've got those two score lines on the right hand side now. And we're going to do exactly the same on the left hand side. So scoring at one and a quarter, like so. And then we're going to score at two and a quarter. So this piece of cardstock that we've cut down, it is from A4 card and all it is is 11 inches in length by six and a half. So six and a half by 11. And just to let you know, I will post all these step by steps, including the measurements on my, um, on my Facebook page after um, the craft along. And I have just noticed, I've just been reminded in my ear, we've not even gone through the shopping list um, for this particular project. So let's just... Should we bring that shopping list in? You're always sat at home going, we know that we're using the 3D steam builders, but we don't know anything else. So we're gonna give you the shopping list right now. It does, it does always help to know what you need, won't it? So what you will need is you'll need your Gemini Christmas Cottage stamp and die set. Also your Gemini Centers Grotto stamp and die set. And those are both from those Christmas 3D scene builders. You'll need your Spectrum Noir Tri-Blends and we'll take you through the colours that we've used a little bit later in the craft along. You'll also need your Spectrum Noir Alcohol Proof Ink Pad, we're using the Pebble colour. Your Spectrum Noir Water Reactive Ink Pad in Anthracite. A hard one to say that, I don't know why I use that ink pad, as I knew I'd have to say it out loud, but Anthracite is the colour you want. Your Gemini 6x6 inch matte and layer dies. From the Tis the Season collection, you'll need the wonderful time of year stamp and die set. Uh, from Craft Kit 48, you'll just need the papers that you get within that craft kit. Multi-purpose card, Nina card, the craft card that we've already seen as we uh, jumped ahead a little bit. Then your additional elements are your Collal all-purpose glue, your red liner tape, foam pads, low-tack tape, Gemini die-cutting machine, large guillotine, scoreboard, 8x8 inch magnetic stamping platform, pair of scissors, pokey tool and a blending tool and sponges. So that's everything that you're going to need. You know, 
go sort of rewind a little bit now we'll go back to the project we've got some lovely comments coming through love to get all your comments all your feedback any questions do get them in i am all on my own again today they've left me all on my own but you know um, so get your comments in keep keep me company it would be absolutely fabulous to hear if you are crafting along please do share your projects with us uh, after the show as well because we do all love to see them and another little incentive to get your comments is a little bit later we will be picking one lucky commenter to actually win an amazing prize um, like we've been doing throughout our ctv anniversary week i'm going to choose one of the incredible prizes we've got and one lucky commenter will be winning that so another reason to get your comments in not just to keep me company because i'm all alone i've got the voices in my head but it's lovely to know that you guys are keeping me company too but back to the project we know what we need we're back on the project now so our craft card we cut it down to 11 inches by six and a half on the left hand side we scored at one and a quarter and two and a quarter and then we've just flipped it and we're doing exactly the same we're scoring at one and a quarter and two and a quarter and this gives us basically two score lines on the left and two score lines on the right and this is literally all you need to do in terms of your score lines and um, so a really easy card to create but when it's all put together you've got a real nice lot of dimension on there with that diorama effect which is perfect for building up all your scenes now one thing to note we will come onto the dies uh, in just a moment but within each of the die sets within this collection so your 3d christmas scene builder collection you will get instructions and these have actually been designed um, with a z fold card in mind so when you look at the packaging you'll see that it shows you this z fold card um, design onto there so that's what they've been traditionally designed for but you guys at home know what i'm like this is definitely not a, a Z fold card. What I tend to do with concept cards like these, I'll make one card up in the, the way they've been designed, the way they're intended um, perhaps, and then I'll sort of go off piece a little bit and think of different ways I can be using these stamps and dies, which is why we're popping together a diorama card today on our craft along. But if you do want to know how to make up that Z fold card, within every packet you will get the instructions, both little diagrams and words, so really easy to follow with your instructions. That's if you like to follow the intended way. But today we're going, like I said, a little bit off piste to create our uh, diorama card. A nice, easy card shape, as we're seeing. But of course, you can be using this sort of card fold with anything else you've got in your crafty stash. It doesn't just have to be these Christmas 3D scene builders. I mean, perhaps you've got the everyday version um, that we launched of these. I think that launched about May time. Um, so perfect for all year round those. But if you want a festive make, um, then your Christmas ones that we're focusing on today are gonna be absolutely perfect. So we've just folded that piece like so. So you're going in and out, so different directions for each score line and mirrored on both sides. So that's that piece. But what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna bring in some of our dies to do a little bit of die cutting to pop an aperture into here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our Gemini matte and layer dies. Now I know a lot of our craft experts absolutely sing the praises of these. Now these are Cray's favorite, um, probably one of his favorite die sets. This was actually his idea and what a fabulous idea it is. These are some of these dies that you'll use day in, day out. There's barely a day that goes back in my crafty, my crafty life, which is my, my day to day life because I do craft every single day. Barely a day goes by that I don't use these dies. We've got a five by seven version and then this six by six version that we're gonna be using for this particular project. And if we turn this over and look at the actual die set itself and the dies that we get, can see there's so many dies in here of a range of different sizes they're great for your matting and layering like the name suggests great by cutting a couple of them at once to create frames fabulous for creating apertures like we're going to be doing here i use some lows for creating frames for shaker cards of course they are squares and i think sometimes we we almost forget this which i know it sounds a little bit daft and it might be really obvious to some of you at home but they're squares but of course don't forget to use them on the diagonal to create more of a diamond effect so a really versatile set of dies if you've not already got these definitely do check out the website because they are an absolute crafty essential i'm using the third die down and um, so saying the largest one is num die number one um, and then two and then this is die number three so the third largest uh, within this die set we'll have a little measure of see roughly how big this is uh, it's about five inches square 
And what we're going to do is this centre section, so to our, this piece of our card base, we've basically got the two outer sections on both sides, and then we've got this middle section. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our die, of course, blade facing down, we're going to line that up so it's central, top and bottom, and then left and right from those two score lines there, and tape down using some of our low-tack tape. You will find our low-tack tape um, on the website. It comes in, I think, about three rolls in a pack. Absolute essential, as you will see as we move through the craft along a little bit later when we're using stamps and dies. It's essential for keeping your dies in position as we run them through our die cutting machine, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. And these are thin metal dies, so just your regular thin metal uh, die cutting sandwich through your Gemini. Of course, I'm using my Gemini. We love this machine. I'm going for the A4 size, just because of the size of the piece of cardstock, with it being six and a half inches by 11, your um, full size Gemini is what you'll need um, for this particular size of cardstock. Um, but something else to note that we did as we ran this through the die cutting machine, of course we taped into position using our low tack tape. And I don't know if you can notice, I tried to tape on the waist uh, as much as I possibly can. And this is something, I probably bang on about it a little bit too much. You guys at home are probably sat there saying, Lily, I know you've told me time and time again, but we do get fabulous new viewers all the time. And um, so I do always think it's important just to point this out. Always try and tape on the waist as much as possible. So for this particular um, card we're creating, we're creating an aperture. So the piece in the middle is what we're not actually using. So if you can add your low tack tape onto that piece as much as possible. If you do have a little bit of, as I call them, craft, crafty boo-boos, and you actually um, rip your cardstock when you peel off the tape. I know I can be a little bit gung-ho sometimes. I can sort of peel back the cake. The, peel back the cake, oh dear, I've got cake on the mind. It's our lovely Jenny's birthday today and there's cake all, all in the office, so um, cake on the mind. But if you peel back the tape, not the cake, uh, and you are a little bit gung-ho and you end up ripping a little bit of your cardstock, because you've taped onto the waist, you're only ripping a bit of card that you're going to be throwing away anyway, um, so it's no big issue. So we can see we've got that perfect aperture into the centre of there. And because we have run that through our die cutting machine, and of course all die cutting machines work on pressure, you may flatten those um, score lines ever so slightly. So it's just a case of perhaps getting your bone folder again and just reinforce your, um, your score lines using your um, bone folder and that will give you that lovely um, crease onto there. So we're going to leave that piece to one side for just a moment and we're going to bring in another piece of craft card and for this particular one we've cut it to six and a half again so it's the same height as this piece but it's now nine inches in length so six and a half by nine for this one and no score lines for this what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some of our pattern papers now you will have seen when we did finally get to our uh, ingredients list that the papers we're using are actually from Subsbox 48 and I must say this was one of my most favorite subs boxes I, okay I probably say that about all subs boxes but um, it was my favorite at the time until the next one comes along as is always the case um, with the subs boxes I, I do love a subs box um, but this was craft kit um, 48 and these are the papers from this craft kit and I just thought this wood effect worked really nicely um, with this particular sort of design of card and what we've done is we've cut it down to six and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches and this is going to be our matte layer that's going to go behind um, that aperture that we've die cut into that centerpiece. So I'm using some um, of our tape pen, they are back in stock believe it or not um, so do grab those off the website um, but of course you can use your all purpose glue that does tend to be what I use um, when I'm at home just give me that little bit of wiggle room but for speed um, your tape pens are perfect so a six and a quarter square piece of that going directly into the middle of there so we've got about an inch and a quarter either side uh, of that piece we're now coming back to this die cut piece we've got two strips of exactly the same pattern paper it is one inch in length by six and a quarter in height and we're going to add these either side on these two little strips uh, on the very left and right hand side just to add a little bit more um, design, a little bit more interest onto there and it's going to make sure that the front of our card is matching with the inside of the card. We've got that same pattern paper on the inside and the outside so everything's going to sort of harmonise and work together really really nicely. So again just some flat adhesive, just some tape runner, of course it can be your double sided finger lift, it can be your um, tacky glue if you prefer. I tend not to use tacky glue for matting and layering, I'll tend to use something like an all purpose glue for my matting and layering. Um, 
but that will work really nicely for that and that's starting to build up um, our mats and layers for our card base. And it's just going to be a case of actually um, sticking these two pieces together to form our card base properly. So what we're going to do is going to turn this piece over and because this is a moving part to um, a, well, say a moving part, it's sort of like the construction element to our card. We're going to bring in some red liner tape just to make sure that we've got a really nice bond, a really good um, stick onto um, our card shape. So we need adhesive on the two outer sections of this uh, scored piece. So basically on the reverse of the piece where we've got those um, pattern panels is where we're going to need our adhesive. We don't need it on any other piece uh, or any other section of this card base. So I'm using our red liner tape in the 12mm uh, width and it's always really really useful to have different uh, widths of your um, red liner tape. You'll just find that you'll use different ones of course for different um, sorts of projects that you're doing and um, it's just useful to have those different options. And what I always say I try to work on sort of one side at a time just makes it a little bit more um, manageable. So I'm going to start off with this side so I'm going to remove my backing from my red liner tape and then I'm going to take some of my collal tacky glue and because it's important that we want to get this um, really well lined up and in position what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some of the tacky glue onto the backing uh, of this red liner tape once I've removed the backing just to give me that little bit of maneuverability that time to wiggle this into position and get it so it's nice and central and I'm just lining up that edge of that piece with the edge of that back piece and once I'm happy that that's in position I'm just going to burnish that down and that's going to give us uh, that nice strong stick onto there just like so and then we're going to go and focus on the other side so I'm going to then again peel back the backing of our red liner tape and then again a little bit more of our tacky glue I've only added one piece of red liner tape just to make sure it's stuck down well I'm going to add some tacky glue along that other edge just to get that nice firm bond and again we're adding some of that um, tacky glue onto the um, exposed adhesive of our red liner tape just to give us that little bit of maneuverability and wiggle time onto there and then that is the basis of our card that's our card base all um, done and good to go so of course you could be using this card shape for any um, of your um, different projects that you're working with anything else you've got in your crafty stash it's completely up to you um, but this is going to be obviously the basis of where we're going to add um, our um, our different decorations from our Christmas 3D scene builders uh, onto. So we're going to leave that to one side just for a minute and you might know that I added our um, panels in a slightly different orientation to what we did on our original. Just goes to show that you can use it in the, and I always struggle with this, horizontal and vertical. Hmm, interesting. Um, I always find it difficult to um, remember which one is which but the up and down and left and right works either way and even on the same same card having the two different directions does really work so it's nice to have these unidirectional papers I always find it means you get more um, from each sheet which is always a good thing but what we're going to do now is like I say we're going to bring in our 3D scene builders stamp and dice and the sets we're going to be working with today are the Santa's Grotto and also the Christmas Cottage included in the collection that you will find on the website and um, it is a set of three so you get in the um, Santa's Grotto, the Christmas Cottage and the Christmas Eve but these are the two we are using for this particular project. So we're going to use our Santa's Grotto to start with and what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our uh, stamp platform and you do get lots and lots of stamps and dies within this collection. Um, most of the stamps will have a matching die, but there are dies that don't have stamps um, sort of for building those scenes. So you've got things like your archway. This is a really, really useful die that you've got within this set. Not only does it cut that log outline, but it also debosses all that wood grain um, into that die cut image. So a really useful one for building up your scenes, um, not just with this collection, not just with these stamps, but in any of your other projects too. You have things like the bows, which are great for cutting in your colored card, perhaps your glitter, cars and your mirror cars to build up those scenes and then this is a really really useful die that I've used a lot and uh, this snowy sort of board it could be like icicles it uh, works perfectly going on the logs it's sized perfectly to fit onto there but of course you could be using it perhaps on along the archway or with any other of the dice and stamp sets within this collection too so lots of really useful dies and uh, within this um, just the one die set stamp and die set that we've got uh, within 
this collection of three. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our stamp platform and I'm always going on about how much I love our 8x8 eight eight inch stamp platform uh, with the magnetic base. It makes it so, so easy um, to stamp. Perhaps you're new to stamping, perhaps you've struggled with stamping in the past um, using some of the old style sort of acrylic blocks, maybe you've struggled to get a good impression uh, with those, then definitely give, give this a go. I find it so easy um, to work with. And if you do have a little bit of a crafty boo-boo, as we call them, and you do miss an area, perhaps you miss ink or you miss stamp, uh, or for whatever reason it might be, you just didn't apply enough pressure, you can just go back in, re-ink. The stamp won't have moved uh, and the cardstock won't have moved because we've got those fabulous, that magnetic base with our magnets, and it just means you can re-stamp and get that perfect image um, second time round. So what I'm doing is I'm choosing a few of the stamps from within this set. I'm popping them down onto my piece of Nina cardstock, which is a white cardstock, perfect um, for use with our alcohol pens because that's what we're going to be colouring with a little bit later. I've picked my stamps up onto the lid of our platform and then I'm just taking uh, one of our Spectrum Noir ink pads. This is one of our alcohol proof ink pads and I'm using the pebble colour. And I always say the pebble is almost like a cross between a grey and a brown and it gives you a really nice subtle uh, soft finish. We don't always need to stamp in black and that's something that I always sort of almost forget. And I know it sounds a little bit daft because I've got probably well over 100 ink pads. I didn't just confess to that but I have a lot of ink pads in my crafty stash and I I'm one of these, I always go back to stamp with black and I think no, trying to stop myself, trying to remember we can stamp in lots of different colours and it's just going to give us a different effect. So don't just always think of your black outlines, think of using um, your different colours as well. Now I have, I think I just didn't ink it up to be quite honest, put enough ink on that middle stamp and this is exactly uh, what I was saying about just now, how these stamp platforms are absolutely perfect if you do miss an area when you are inking. Just go back in, re-ink and re-stamp. And because the um, stamp platform is magnetic, our car stock has, hasn't moved. We obviously haven't moved our um, stamps, they're still on the lid. So we know that everything is going to be in exactly the right place. And we can just go back down, re-ink and re-stamp until we've sort of filled out um, that whole image and we're happy with how that's looking. So the only th last thing to do is you'll notice this signpost and this is a really useful um, stamp to have and it's great for customising all of your makes. So within the, in the collection um, we can actually add whatever we like into this sign. So perhaps it's a new home card at winter so you could be adding maybe um, sort of the house name of, of the uh, person's new home for something really nice and personalised. But what we've got within the collection is we've actually got these two stamps, the uh, Santa's Grotto and North Pole and those have been designed and sized perfectly to actually go on this sign. So all we need to do is we just need to turn them over and line them up. You can see that they've been sized exactly to fit on those areas of the sign. So just line those up like so. When you're happy with where they're positioned then all we're going to do is going to close our um, stamp platform over the top of there picking those up onto the lid and then inking them up using our pebble um, ink pad and then just turn it over and stamping onto that image and then that just fills in our sign. Really easy to do because they've been sized perfectly um, to fit onto there but like I say I'm sure you guys uh, will have other stamps within your collection that will fit onto there perfectly as well so you can sort of customise the sign to whatever you need. So of course you don't have to put any of the words on there, you could leave that um, sort of without the words and just colour over that area, that would still look absolutely fabulous as well. Um, so just lots of different options which I think is what we always like and it's what this set and this whole collection is about really. It's about giving you options. It's about being able to build those scenes however you like, whether you are doing your Z fold cards, whether you're doing dioramas like we are here, perhaps you're doing pop-up box cards, exploding box cards, lots you can do with these. Just sort of let your imagination run away with you a little bit. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to die cut our images and what I always tend to do is I'll stamp first, then I'll die cut, then I'll colour and I know uh, a lot of us guys that here at Practice Companion do do this in different ways. We do do this. <laughs> We do this in different ways, um, lots of do's there, um, and it's, it is personal preference. My thinking is I always find it easier to uh, die cut after I've stamped, and I always think if you um, colour and then die cut and have a little boo-boo, 
then you've wasted sort of the whole time that you've been colouring that image. Whereas if you stamp and then die cut when it's not being coloured and you have a little boo-boo, then the only sort of time that you've wasted is the stamping time. Um, so it's just sort of sort of safeguards you a little bit. Just means in case you do have a little problem and your die does slip for whatever reason and you have to uh, discard that piece, you're not having to throw away something that you've spent a bit of time colouring in. Um, so I just find, for me, that's the best way um, to work with stamps and dies. So completely um, up to you the way that you work. I tend to, um, like I say, stamp, die cut and then colour. But of course, always completely up to you with what you find easiest. I mean, some lovely comments coming through this afternoon. So thank you all for your company. It's nice to know that I'm not, I'm not alone. You know, I might be in an empty room all on my own, but it's nice to hear that you guys at home are all watching out and um, hopefully crafting along as well. I'd love to, to see your pictures if you do craft along with me today. Uh, we're having some of you guys saying you're loving your stamping platforms as well, saying how easy it is. It is, isn't it? Doesn't it just make a difference when you've got tools that do the job that make our lives an awful lot easier? Isn't it just so, so enjoyable? It makes crafting a lot more fun when we're not having to worry about or we, have we got the right tool for the job? Is this going to work? Am I going to have to sort of throw pieces of cardstock away because I've not managed to stamp properly the first time? Just makes crafting even more enjoyable and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Crafting should be fun, should be enjoyable. So anything that sort of takes away from that, for me, not, not a big fan of anything that's going to, going to be sort of boring and laborious. And this is another thing about having the dies here. You guys at home probably do know that I love my fussy cutting. But first of all, I've not always got time to sit and fussy cut all of the images uh, for a card. Perhaps we need quite a quick make. We're going to have to quickly um, put a card together. Perhaps somebody's asked you last minute, oh, can you quickly make a birthday card for so-and-so? It's a birthday tomorrow and I'm coming up tonight and I need, need this card ready. Can you make one? Perhaps you've not got the time um, to, to make that card that perhaps you'd like. So having the dies that match the stamps just makes it a lot easier and quicker. And all we have to do is just line up the dies with the stamps. There's a slight border around all of them. Once you're happy with your positioning, of exactly the same sort of technique that we used with our matting and layering dies, then just take them down with some of your, not cake, tape, your low tack tape. Definitely no cake about it, unfortunately. Um, just take them down. I always say more than one piece of tape. So one either side, just so that those dies definitely aren't moving anywhere. And again, the same as what we did with our matting and layering dies. Just make sure that you tape on the waist as much as possible, uh, just to reduce that risk of ripping any of your uh, your stamped images. So then it's just a case of popping these out of the cardstock. Of course, through our Gemini, they've cut absolutely perfectly. And I did use my uh, full-size Gemini again with my full-size plates, um, just so I could run a lot of these through all at once. And this one. We didn't actually stamp this one out, I pre-stamped this, but this is uh, from the Christmas Cottage die set. Absolutely love uh, that stamp, it's so, so cute. Um, but yeah, just stamping and die cutting those really nicely uh, and easily through our die cutting machine. With them being th thin metal dies, they will go through any of your standard die cutting machines. Um, we used our Gemini full size so it could fit them all through, but they will fit through your smaller die cutting machines. I'm thinking probably a lot of these will go through your mini. So if you are perhaps um, having a session where you stamp a load out, then maybe you're going to spend an evening doing a lot of die cutting just in front of the telly. And then it'd be great to have your little manual machines uh, just on your lap. It'd be nice and easy. And what I'd recommend with something like this, when you've got uh, seam builders, any sort of seam builders, uh, I do the sort of same sort of thing with any sort of flower dies as well, foliage dies. I'll have a session where I'll, where I'll sit and make a lot up. So I'll um, stamp lots of the images, I'll colour a lot of them in, and then I'll have like a stash ready. So whenever I'm wanting to actually create a project using that particular range, whether it's creating a scene, a card, a box, whatever it might be, I've got a lot of the images ready to choose from. Uh, and it sort of gives you lots of choice. You can then play about with your composition and you've got lots of the different images. You can mix and match and decide exactly how you want to work everything together. And of course, all the ones that you don't use, you can just save um, for a future project. I find that's the best way to work with something like this. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of colouring. And I do always recommend when you're colouring, and Leanne will say exactly the same, um, it's always a good tip to make sure you've got your um, 
some sort of cardstock or paper. It doesn't have to be anything fancy at all underneath um, where you're working, just to sort of um, protect your surface for one reason, but also when you colour, the ink will have somewhere to go underneath the cardstock. If we've got something like a glass mat underneath, what can happen is the ink from the pens goes through the cardstock, it will come out the other side, and if it's got something that's non-porous, like a glass mat, it can just pull underneath, and what can happen is that ink can end up being sucked back up through your cardstock, and it can give the effect like we've got sort of bleeding of the ink around those stamp lines. By having something porous, like a piece of cardstock, when the pen comes through this coloured piece to the other side, it can then be absorbed through this piece of cardstock underneath, and it's just going to make sure that ink's not sucked back up through our cardstock, and it's just going to give us that better effect. We're going to start off with this lovely little Santa sack, and um, we're going to colour this in using our uh, tan shades and tan blender. We're going to be using some of our tri blends to colour these images in. Great if you're a beginner, they're so, so easy to work with. Each pen is almost like three pens in one. So with these being our regular tri blends, they're a bullet nib, we do also do a tri blend brush uh, version, which are basically the same, just with a brush nib on the end. So a lovely fine bullet nib, three pens in one. We've got a dark, a mid and a light all numbered and lettered, the same system as our um, Spectrum Noir Illustrators and Classics. So if you're familiar with that lettering and numbering system, then these will be a breeze to understand. Um, but your letters, your colour family, and your numbers are um, sort of how, um, how dark it is. So the lowest number is the, um, the lightest, and the um, higher number is the darker. Um, darker of that, that three pen blend. So we've got um, our tan shades and our tan blend. So the tan shades are our three darkest, so it's our TN6, 8 and 9. And our tan blend are the three lighter ones, so that's TN4, 2 and 1. And by using them both together, it's going to give you lots of sort of options for giving lots of shading onto all of your um, your images that you're colouring in. We're going to start off with our tan blend and don't just think because we've got three pens in one that you just have to use those three pens in isolation. You can use other pens in sort of conjunction and to really extend that blending possibility with all your colouring. So our tan blend, we're going to start off with our darkest which is our TM4. I'm going to be focusing on this um, Santa's sack that we've got here and all we're going to do is going to work over this um, bottom section of the sack, just colouring over um, our image like so. So I tend to work in circular motions when I'm laying down this base colour, and this is going to be the lightest colour that we're actually colouring with. I tend to work in these small circular motions, and I find this gives me the most even lay down of colour onto our stamped images. It gives us that smooth blend all over that image, so a nice even coat of colour onto here with our lightest colour. So we go over the majority of this section of the image and I do always recommend work in small sections, in small areas. You don't have to sort of think about you've got to colour the whole image all at once. Just working in small areas, make it a lot more manageable and also working when your ink is wet rather than working onto dry card is a lot easier. Now with alcohol pens, the beauty of them is we've got this ability to layer them. But if we lay down one colour, uh, one coat of one colour, then we're not going to get a smooth blend. We need to go over the same area more than once using um, that same pen and that will build up this smooth blend and we're going to fully dye the fibres of the cardstock by doing so. So I'm going over this area just another time to start to really build up the colour and give us this smooth blend onto there. And once we're happy that we've fully dyed the fibres of this cardstock, what we should see from the reverse, we've got that pen going through to the back side of our cardstock. Once we're happy that we've done that, we're going to move on to our tan shades. And we're starting off with the lightest of this three pen blend. I'm going to start to add some shading. Now the great thing about these stamps is that we've got a lot of the clues, a lot of the shading and the sort of shadows already added in there. So where we've got our lines, that's sort of telling us uh, that we're going to have darker areas. So underneath this line, we're going to add an area of shadow where that line's going to be casting a shadow onto the sack underneath. Exactly the same with this line here. We're adding some more of this darker pen just underneath to give us that sense um, of sort of dimension onto here. It's a sack full of presents, so we want to sort of give it a little bit of life, give it um, a little bit of a sort of a full, full effect to it. And by just following these, um, 
these lines, these stamp lines that the stamp has already put down for us, it allows us um, to get that life very easily uh, without having to think too much about light sources or anything like that. Uh, we can get that depth and that dimension quite quickly and quite easily, even if you are new to colouring. And using our tri blends makes that really easy to achieve. Then we're moving on to our next pen within this three pen blend, which is our mid tone. What we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the areas that we've just added that lighter tone to, but making sure we don't cover over all of the pen uh, that we've just laid down. Otherwise, um, there's sort of be no point of laying down that, that lighter colour. So we want to cover over some of the areas, um, but not all of that pen that we've just laid down. So this is starting to add even more depth and dimension onto this part of the image. And then finally, we're bringing in our TN9, which is our darkest within the tan shades. I'm gonna add this onto only the very darkest areas where there's most shadow and shade onto this image to really make this design pop, give it that realistic um, sort of look to this. Um, stamped image so just around the edges to give it that sort of like rounded feel by having it a little bit darker at the edges and again just underneath where we've got these lines here um, to give the effect that they're sort of casting a shadow onto the sack underneath so just going around the edges like so and what we do is we repeat this exact same technique with this other part of uh, our sack it just makes it a lot easier to color in the um, lower part and then the upper part of the sack. Just breaking your images down uh, into different sections makes it a lot, a lot easier to colour and a lot more manageable. So we're starting off with our tan blend, the darkest within that three pen blend, giving that even base coat all over this part of the image. Then we're going in with our tan shades, adding that around the, um, the very edges of this piece. Then we work up to the mid tone. And the way I tend to work with my alcohol pens, I'll usually work from light to dark. So I'll put the lightest down first, that even um, base coat all over that stamped image. And then I'll start to work up the shades. And the very last um, pen tone that I'll be adding on will be that darkest um, pen color within that blend. We talk a lot about three pen blends, but it doesn't always have to just be three pen. Uh, I mean, obviously the tri blends have been designed to give you that seamless three pen blend. But like we are doing here, we're bringing in that fourth um, colour just to further sort of prolong that blend and give you even more um, depth and dimension onto that stamped image. You can see how easily that has been built up. Um, just using our tri blends, using four different colours or across two different pens gives us that shade and that depth and dimension onto there. But what we're going to do now is going to bring back in this one we did earlier, um, we stamped and die cut our signpost a little bit earlier. I'm going to focus on the signpost elements to show you how we can get a little bit of texture with our colouring. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our uh, tan blend, but we're going to go with our mid-tone for this particular one. So for the last one we used our um, darkest tone within this three pen blend as our um, our lightest colour, but what we're going to do this time is we're going a little bit lighter. So we're going to go over this area again, same technique as we used for our sack. So I'm laying down that colour onto um, most of the part um, of this particular image. We're not having to go right to the edges, I'm not worried about that um, too much. We're just going to um, go all over that image just like so. And then we're going to bring in our next colour, which is our darkest within this particular uh, pen blend. I'm going to add this around the edges again, starting to bring in um, a few of the darker tones onto this part of the signpost. Then what we're going to do, rather than trying to achieve a, 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 um, a seamless blend on here, we want to add in sort of a wood texture. So we're just going to start to flick. We're not going to cover all of that lightest tone, but we're just going to start to flick to add that almost like wood grain texture onto there. And then we're going to move up to our tan shades, working with our lightest. And again, we're going to go around the edges of this particular part of the sign. But the same technique as what we've just used with that lighter colour, rather than trying to get that smooth blend. I mean, we talk about achieving that smooth, seamless blend, and that's great. A lot of our colouring does require that sort of a smooth transition from the light to dark, but sometimes we want to get a little bit more texture into our stamped images um, to real, really give them that, that sense of light, that sense of, of realism. And by using a technique like this that will bring a little bit more texture in, it just gives it that lovely, really like professional finishing touch onto uh, all of your coloured images. 
So I'm not trying to blend the colours out too much, just flicking inwards is going to give us that um, almost like wood grain texture onto there. It's going to make it look a lot more interesting um, than if we were to just colour and blend it sort of seamlessly. So if you were to look at um, sort of an old plank of wood, I'm sort of thinking this is probably quite an old sign, perhaps it's been at the North Pole for quite a good few years. It's quite weather beaten by all the snow. It's going to have a lot of texture. It's going to be almost like a, a gnarled wood. So we want to get across that texture uh, when we're adding our coloured um, colouring mediums onto this particular piece. Then we're going around the very edges just to finish off with our darkest um, pen like so. So that's going to bring us the texture into there. We'd repeat that exact same technique with that North Pole section, but it's just the same technique and I want to try and get in as many techniques as I possibly can. Um, so we're going to move on to another part of the uh, of the stamped image. So let's bring in bring in Santa next and I'm going to show you how we can colour and we can add depth to red. Now I always think colouring red, if you can colour red in well it always looks absolutely fabulous I always think. Um, so it's just a few tips and techniques to give you a little bit of depth onto your colouring. What we're going to be working with is again our tri-blends, this time the dark red shades and the dark red blend and by using both the shades and the blend together it's going to give us those more blending opportunities like we saw uh, when we were colouring our sack a little bit earlier gives us more shades and colours um, to choose from to really give us um, that realistic effect. Starting off again with our lightest um, pen tone, which is DR1. It's the lightest from the dark red blend. And we're just going to focus on this top part of the suit. So we're not going to colour the full suit. We're just going to focus on the, um, the, one, the one technique. Uh, and then we're going to sort of repeat that technique um, all over the suit just to build up that shading. We're getting some lovely comments through this afternoon and thank you so much uh, for your company. It's lovely to have all your company. I hope you're having a fabulous crafty day whatever you're up to. I hope you're crafting along. Perhaps you're saving the show for a little bit later um, so you can craft along at your leisure. I know it's quite quick, quite fast and furious when we've only got the hour so I'm just trying to focus on the techniques as much as I possibly can um, just to really teach you all the key parts um, to putting this project together. But if you do make your project at a later date, I'd still absolutely love love to see what you make. Um, please do post it on Facebook, you know, any of our groups. I'm a Crafters Companion or Club Inspired Community or just uh, on my own Lily Fletcher Crafters Companion page. I do love seeing what you create. Um, had a few lovely pictures from Monday's Craft Along actually, if you joined us, some amazing creations. You guys seem to love that triple easel card and I'm so pleased. Saw some absolutely stunning, um, stunning makes. We do apologise that it is only an hour. You know, I'd love to be here all afternoon with you, but unfortunately, I did try to say, can we have a five hour craft along? No, we're, we're not having it. I'd love to, to be here all day, but we do have so much going on today. Everything that's going off with our um, CTV anniversary, um, anniversary event. So we do unfortunately have to speed a few of the processes up, um, but hopefully you can sort of watch it back at your own leisure and still follow along with all the key techniques that I am teaching you. Hopefully there should be plenty there um, to teach you guys exactly how to put this project together. But I'm sorry that there's a few bits we sort of have to skip forward a little bit. Um, we don't tend to do that with a craft along, but just because we've got an hour, it just means we can pack in uh, as much as we possibly can to just sort of teach you all the key skills that you'll need for this particular card. So I will be bringing in some pre-coloured images in a little bit, but hopefully I will have shared all the techniques with you uh, in order to be able to achieve those colouring effects. And like I say, uh, a little bit later this afternoon or evening, I will pop all of the step-by-step -step instructions, including all the measurements onto my Facebook page. And I will share that in the um, Our Crafters Companion and Club Inspire community groups as well. So if you have missed anything, so like I say, I know we've been a little bit fast and furious and I hate to have to speed things along, but just to fit it all in the hour that we do have, uh, I'll make sure I get all that information shared so you do have that to refer back to uh, at a later date but I am so grateful for all of you to, uh, to all of you, get my teeth in, uh, for joining just me all on my own this afternoon. It's lovely to have your company. Really exciting day we've got here on Crafters um, TV as ever, uh, but it's super exciting cartload tonight. I'll certainly, certainly um, be snapping up some of those bargains as I hope you guys will be as well, but it's nice to just have this hour of education, of a little bit of colouring, a little bit of crafting on an afternoon, crafting along together. Perhaps you've already got these stamps and dies, 
and you're sat along crafting or perhaps you're thinking I've not got these stamps and dies yet maybe you've not seen them before it's the first time you've seen them and you're thinking oh I need a piece of that I want a slice of that action get yourself on the website you will find them on the shop the day category it is a fabulous collection of stamps and dies uh, to be crafting with me and Debbie Robinson were saying actually when we launched these these are very much for your, your sort of special mates for, for all those special cards that you're creating these are going to be absolutely perfect they're going to make real show stopping mates I think anything where you build up a scene you add dimension you add lots of elements onto there I think it makes for absolutely incredible cards I think these will be the ones that will be what we call the mantelpiece pleasers and of course you'll be making really big and bold uh, cards with these and they're going to look stunning when you're bringing all your different concepts of your cards. So that's how we'd colour in this suit. So just working up from our lightest to our darkest with our dark red blend. And then we bring in our dark red shades. Again, working up from the lightest to the darkest. And that's how we get that real depth and dimension, that shading onto that. It does make that image really, really pop and makes it stand out. Same technique, we repeat all over Santa's uh, suit just to build up that colour. I'm going to bring in another of the pieces that we actually stamped and die cut a little bit earlier. And this was this lovely uh, Christmas cottage. And I have to say, the only thing I can think of when I look at this is it's gingerbread. So we're going to colour in uh, this in so it looks like gingerbread. And what we're going to do is going to use our tan blend to do this. Fo going to focus on this right hand side just to show you all the technique but then we will be bringing in one uh, that we fully coloured in but hopefully you should be able to um, to sort of get the, the technique that we use in here and then you can just repeat uh, that same process all over that full image. So starting on this right hand side, tan blend, the lightest colour again within that three pen blend. And we're colouring over this section, I'm leaving off the door and I'm leaving off the window. I think it's got to have a lovely red door, it's almost like a... Um, Let's think of candy canes, little gingerbread candy cane, cane cottage. I think it's ever so cute, this um, particular design. And it goes to show as well how you don't have to use the three stamp and die sets in isolation. Of course, you can mix and match, use them all together to get fabulous um, results and really show stopping makes with lots and lots of detail onto those. So now we're going in with our mid tone with our, within our tan blend. I'm going to add this around the edges. Um, of this particular stamped image. We will have um, a shadow underneath sort of the eaves of the house. So it's going to be a little bit darker under there. So we want some of this mid-tone around that area. And we also want the mid-tone around the edges to give us that sort of uh, sense of, of shape to this particular part of the image. And then when we're happy with that, we're going to go in with our darkest within this three pen blend. And we're going to add this around the very edges um, of this part of the um, I'm thinking it's a gingerbread cottage. It definitely is a gingerbread cottage. I'm going to add this around the edges for that extra bit of shading, just like so. Very easy to colour, very simple. Just a three pen blend, lightest colour all over that image. A little bit of the um, mid tone around the edges, and then the very, very edges where there's going to be that shadow we add in in our darker. If you do want to add a little bit more depth and dimension, bring in your tan shades, bring in your lightest um, pen from the tan shades and if you want to go a little bit darker add in a few more shadows perhaps you want even more depth and dimension onto here just bring that in and that will give you those darker areas onto there with your shades are always um, the darker three pen tones than you get in your blend really easy to do but something we are going to have a little look at now is how we colour uh, white and what I always say it's always a funny one um, by adding colour to white, it makes it look more white, which is one of those, it doesn't really make any sense. But by adding a little bit of grey, or perhaps this is a little bit of blue, in this instance we're going to be using grey, by adding that to a white area of your stamped image, what it means is it's going to make that look um, even more white. It's going to make it look a lot more realistic. If you were to look at anything that was actually white in real life, it wouldn't be a perfect white. They'd have lots of different colour tones in there, so we need to get that across in our colouring as well. So using our ice grey blend, the palest within the three, we're going to add around the very edges. Make sure we don't colour over the full area. We want to leave that preserved highlight of the white co uh, card in the middle. Then going in with our, um, our mid-tone around the edges, not going over that full area that we've coloured, just adding a little bit extra of shading onto there. And then finally, just in the very darkest bits, we're going in the darkest um, darkest pen within this three pen blend, just to add even more shading onto there. And although this area is white, doesn't it just make a difference by adding in a little bit of color onto that? It's strange, it makes, makes the white look even more white, which is always a little bit of a funny one, but uh, it does just make a difference. 
And we'd again repeat that same technique over this full um, stamped image, but we are going to bring in um, some that we have coloured in already. I'm sorry to have to sort of speed this along, but we've only got 10 minutes left. So we're going to bring in um, exactly the same, uh, same stamps that we used uh, when I showed you how to stamp, how to die cut and the techniques um, that we coloured um, just now. So we've got our cottage, again repeating that same technique we just had a little look at. That sign, that wood grain effect onto the two pieces, repeated that for both of those and then we just used um, our reds and our ice greys onto the pole um, to repeat that like so. Santa we used the earth brown um, blend onto his uh, chair and I will list all of these pen colours when I pop um, the instructions on a little bit later. So the same technique for his suit that we showed you earlier. Again we, sh we showed you how to uh, colour in that sack so we repeated that technique onto this one. Our lovely little elf we coloured her and it's the same technique for her suit as it is for Santa's using those dark red shades and blend. And then finally for our presents uh, we coloured that in adding in some of that grey so it's the same technique that we saw for colouring that white area on the roof. The same technique on here using your ice grey blend is going to give us that depth and dimension and even though they're white by adding in um, that ground to there it does just make them pop. So those are our stamped images we're going to add to our card. So what we're going to do is going to bring back in our card and we're going to start decorating this up. So I'm going to start off with my presents, my lovely sack of presents. I think these look so lovely and festive. It's definitely a full, full sack of presents. Whoever these are for, they definitely, they've been good this year. Some good presents in there. I wonder, wonder if there's a Gemini machine, wonder if there's any Crafters Companion goodies. I hope it's full of, of crafty goodies in my mind. If it was my sack of presents, it definitely would. There'd be lots of paper pads, lots of cards, stock, pens, stamps, inks. Oh, lots of crafty goodies would definitely be in uh, my sack from Santa. But we're adding that onto the right hand side using some of our foam pads. That just lifts it up proud from the card base and gives it that dimension which really makes it stand out which is what we want when we've got um, our focal images like these, our images that we've coloured by hand. We want them to really stand out after all they are the focus of the card. So by raising them up using foam pads it will give it that depth and dimension. And just taking care with both of these because they are hanging over the edges just making sure that we've not got any of our foam tape uh, on that left hand side so it's not hanging over the edge. So a little bit of direct um, dimension and decoration onto the left and the right hand side. I'm going to bring in next our uh, sign and have that onto that left hand side like so. And what I did when I actually put this card together for the first time when I was um, planning my craft along, I laid everything out first, played around with my composition and I didn't stick anything until I'd had a little play around and I decided exactly where I wanted uh, everything to go. So I definitely recommend that. We say don't commit to the stick, just have a little play around, decide exactly where you want everything to go. And when, once you're happy with that composition, maybe take a picture on your phone uh, or anything like that that you've got. Uh, we can just take a quick picture and then remove all the pieces and then just stick them back down and you'll get them um, in sort of the places that you plan to put them. So some foam pads into the center of um, a piece there, sticking that onto that left hand side and then bringing our, in our cottage onto the right hand side for a little bit of balance and again making sure that we're not adding too many foam pads onto this piece. We don't want them jutting into that aperture that we've got in the middle. So a few along the bottom should be enough just to make sure that we've got a nice strong bond onto here but not any of the foam tape sh showing on the back uh, of this piece where we've stuck it down. So if we stick this onto here about like so Make sure it's nice and straight and even. It's nice to have this overlapping uh, onto the aperture here. I think it gives it a really nice um, effect to have it crossing over where we've got the background uh, onto there and we've got the framing craft card around the edge. I think it gives it a really nice effect to have that overlap. Then we're bringing in our two characters and we're going to have these actually in the inside of the card. Almost like they're looking out um, onto the scene on the outside of the card. So we're going to have Santa Claus on his chair towards the left hand side. Just going to line that up so he's sat proud in the center and again we're using some more of our foam pads you could use your 3d glue gel if you find it easier if you want to give these a little bit of shape that would look fabulous as well but for uh, i tend to use my foam pads i find them a lot easier and we're going to have our little elf just stood to the right hand side of our santa just like so and to finish it off all we've done is we've taken a sentiment and this is from our tis the season collection uh, our wonderful time of the year stamp 
uh, and die set and I just thought it's quite a nice apt fitting sentiment uh, for this sort of in imagery. We've stamped it using that same pebble alcohol proof ink pad that we stamped all our images with at the very start of the show. We've inked the edges with that anthracite um, water reactive ink pad and then we're going to pop some foam pads onto this top and um, right hand side. We're going to stick this on the top right hand side of our card just for a little bit of balance. We've got some detail along this side. It just looks a little bit bare up on that top corner. So by adding our sentiment, and of course it could be any sentiment that you've got within the collection. Maybe you've got any of the Sara signature ranges we've brought out this year. Maybe you've got the Bethlehem collection, Vintage Snowman. Um, you could be using any of those um, sentiments onto here or even perhaps anything handwritten or printed so you could really personalise your make. And that is our um, craft along all done and good to go. So a nice, um, nice easy card shape to do using our diorama card just with a few score lines, bringing in some of our pattern papers and of course those absolutely fabulous uh, Gemini Christmas 3D scene builder stamp and dies. So that was our craft along. I really hope you enjoyed um, crafting along with all of us. Love to see what you guys created if you did um, do to today's craft along. I'd love to see what you've made. But I've moved, in case you hadn't noticed. I've managed to come all the way over here. I know, risky. But here I am because I'm super, super excited about this. I hope you guys have been getting your comments in. I know I'm hearing quite a few coming through my ears. Some lovely comments from all of you at home. It's lovely to have your company, but also super, super exciting for you all because you're going to kind of, of course, be winning a prize. And one of you lucky viewers are going to be winning one of these prizes that I'm actually going to be able to pick exactly what you're going to get. And so today's winner, drum roll, please. We have got on Facebook, our commenter is Jackie Evans. You are today's winner. Well, I say today's winner, this hour's winner, because of course we're going to be having three more winners on tonight's show. So Jackie, you are the, um, the winner for this show. So what am I going to choose for you? Do you know what I'm going to choose for you? I'm going to choose, this is quite an exciting one, but I think this is going to be useful for tonight's show. I think you're going to need this £30 or $30 voucher. I think that is a cracking prize. When you see everything that we've got on tonight's cartload, I think you're going to be spending that £30 or $30 quite easily. So get yourself a fabulous, um, fabulous goodies with that. So congratulations. Make sure you email prizes at crafterscompanion.com. UK. I got this wrong the other day and I've got it wrong again today. It's .com. Prizes at crafterscompanion.com. One of these days I might get it right, but today is definitely not that day, I'm afraid. Um, apparently we have one question about the craft along though. So, ooh. So the overall size of the card will be about, and I'm just in my head, I'm working it out, it'll be six and a half inches by nine inches. Yes, about six and a half by nine. So it's a nice big size, but it's not absolutely massive. And like I say, I will get all those measurements, all those instructions, all the materials, the step-by-steps posted on my Facebook page late this afternoon. I'll get it shared in our, um, in our groups um, this afternoon. It's been so, so lovely to have your company this afternoon. I know it's a little bit of a whistle-stop tour, a little bit quick. Hopefully you've managed to follow along and craft along. And you, of course, can catch up on the show rewind, rewatch everything and just take it at your own pace and hopefully you're going to create something absolutely fabulous that you can be really, really proud of. Um, so thank you so much for your company. I am back next Thursday, so exactly a week today. I've got another craft along. Again, I'm really excited to be sharing that one with you. I'm going to be working with the Christmas fancy sentiment stamp and dies to create a gift box. So hopefully you can join me then. Lots more crafting, but of course, stay tuned for the full day here on Crafters TV. My goodness me, have we got an absolutely cracking car load coming up tonight. I can see outside some of the stuff that they've got lined up, ready to sort of bring through to the studio. My goodness me, there's some amazing deals. So do make sure that you join that tonight. But as I say, thank you so much for your company and I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.